Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern. And, um, yeah, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And I'd just like to say hello to all the new subscribers. Um, the T and E, or shall I say the T and E army seems to be growing. <laughs> Not the Toon army, the T and E army. <laughs> Yeah, um, right, we're over here at um, South Shield Station because this is what the first signal box or scratch built signal box looks like. Um, for those of you that remember me actually building this, I made two and one was entered into a competition and that's now on another layout um, Barry Turner's layout. And uh, yeah, so why are we here? Right, good question. I just want to see what I put inside this signal box to see if I can get some ideas of what I'm going to put into the new signal box. And um, yeah, there seems to be a cupboard there, chair, box. Um, there's a fireplace there, you can just see, you can see the fire bucket, you can see the fireplace. So yeah, you got the levers and you got the bells and all the other equipment associated with a signal box, but I just couldn't remember what I had put into the signal box when I first built this one. So that's why we're over here at the social signal box having a look. Um, yeah, nothing much has changed. <laughs> it's a thing when you build a layout and you finish a section, nothing ever changes unless you add a character or uh, some rolling stock comes whizzing by, but uh, but nothing ever changes. So let's get cracking and see what we're going to do this week. Before we head over to the bench, I just wanted to show you something um, regarding this G5 locomotive and the running number 67247 um, I've acquired this photograph showing that very same locomotive at South Shields station but um, there is a slight difference uh, this engine uh, is the LNER um, engine as you can see there on the side it hasn't got the British Rail insignia um, so this photograph was taken before, long before um, uh, the, the nationalisation period as it were and uh, so that represents uh, probably the 1940s and uh, here we are in the 1950s so that loco did still continue to run and I think uh, Jason mentioned something that it was uh, stationed at the Sunland Sheds and um, it finally got cut up at the Darlington's Works but I'm sure you will let me know uh, regarding the information about this locomotive. Right, now we'll head over to the bench. And finally we're at the bench. God, it took a long time getting here. <laughs> Right, so we're going to start on doing some of the work inside the signal box. What I want to do is create a chimney breast. So I'm using the same material as I've used for the whole signal box. But what I've done here is I've dressed the stones, I've scraped it away and left the stones flat rather than um, um, rustic like there is on the signal box itself. And uh, that will sit um, down the centre of the chimney. I've already cut the hearth. The hearth is um, Will's cobblestone sheets. And I've done a similar thing there. I've scraped the stones flat so we can um, glue this um, chimney breast to the hearth. With a, I think it will make uh, an interesting feature. I mean, uh, when we visited the Great Central Railway, I had the opportunity to look into a signal box 
um, and the signal box that was there had a brick wall with a small fireplace on it so I thought oh I kept that little idea in my in my pocket and I thought I'd use it for here so I'll just glue that together and then I'll work out how I'm going to make the fireplace and um, right so I've got my design here for the fireplace I'll just show you and there we go so that's the design it's it's one of those small cast iron fireplaces so it's a 15 mil up um, 9 mil wide and 2 mil in from either side and that's 8 mil up from the base to that line there so what I'll do is I will cut out this area here and uh, that will become the actual fire itself so um, the plastic strip I'm using is 0.8 thick and um, I'm cutting inside the red line Notice how I've gone from one corner to the other, just to keep those corners crisp. Right, so that's that cut out. So what I'll do now is I'll get some um, two mil half round and come up either side, and then put some strip across the top. I'm not quite worked out what I'm doing around this radius yet but um, I have now glued some 1mm round um, strip around the edges of this fireplace and uh, yeah I think that looks quite interesting on its own and I'll also add a little bit of similar strip um, across the centre of that line there, that edge there and uh, what I will do is with the chimney breast, once that's glued on there, I will cut that out to give the illusion that the fireplace has got more depth once I cut that out. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the fireplace, I thought I'd make a start on the chimney pots. And this is a 3 mil round um, styrene rod. As you can see I've got two little grooves on the top, roughly about a millimetre down and then uh, 2.5 millimetres down. Now how I did that was quite simple. So you get your file and uh, on the file you normally have a serrated edge which you can use for filing. So you use that edge come in roughly about a millimeter press hard on the corner of the file against the rod and just roll it backwards and forwards and once you get it started you can turn the rod at the same time because you're putting pressure on the groove should be the same all the way round And then you should end up with something like that. But uh, you've got to put another groove in yet. So if we come down about the width of the file again, up against your finger, and then do the same again. And then you should end up with two grooves. You can barely see them, but once they're painted, I'm sure they'll be highlighted. Right, so that's one done. I'll glue that on. And that's what they look like on top of the chimney. You can see the, the grooves more clearly now.
Right, so we've moved on a little bit. We have painted the, the floor now and the lower level of the wall. It's had two coats of um, green, 101. And um, we've also glued the chimney pots to the chimney breast. So while waiting for that paint to dry, I'll just quickly show you uh, this, how we're getting on with this fireplace. Um, I have painted the inside black and uh, the outer um, fireplace in a black satin. Um, so there's a bit more left to do the, to this to finish it off. I've got to add some coal and I've got to add some um, orange and yellow paint so it looks like the fire is just simmering away. And I've also dirtied up the hearth. You can see a little gap there. This just goes to show you how deep the fireplace is. It goes to the depth of this core stone. And if I turn it round, I've glued a little piece of paper there. So that's how we get the depth of the fireplace. So that back piece there, you can see that's painted. That's just a piece of paper. Right, so the next right, so we have a plan on how I'm going to tackle uh, these um, steps coming down. Um, I want to cut a piece there uh, and glue that there. Now this is wheel sheet again. You get this with level crossings and that sort of thing. This wooden sheet. So I've cut a piece there a millimetre wider than uh, these spare steps that I've had left in my common handy box. And um, I'll create a landing down this side. So we have a two stage landing coming down from the um, signal box door. So I shall glue this on first and then fit all the bracketry that will support this. And then we'll. Um, right, I've made a little bit of a start. Um, I've glued the planking underneath the doorstep. And now I'm just adding some 2mm um, angle, right angle, um, three strips underneath which will support the planking. And then I'll just glue another piece of angle um, and put in a corner piece. And then that will then support the upper landing. So I'll just put this piece in. Like so. So it's two pieces. I'll put one piece in the middle. Making sure it stays in the middle of this 2mm flat by 0 0.5. And uh, I'll just put one more piece in the middle and that should help to make it look if the, the, the planking is secured to these angles. And I'll just add two braces in the edges as it were. Just push that one so it goes in the way. Like that. So with the, with the right angle coming down it looks like it's braced, if you know what I mean. And this is the idea that I had in mind. So we have one landing, a group of five steps, and then another landing. And then we have another set of steps, which will come away at a right angle, like so. So the, the bracketry has, has worked out quite well, because it looks like um, a welded bracket that's supporting the, the the flooring as it were and then what I'll do here I'll do something similar um, but I have posts coming down and maybe a, a, a bracket underneath there it's just bolt back to the wall and then two posts coming down and then we have the steps coming away at 90 degrees so yeah that, I think that will look quite good especially when it's um, all hand reeled up as well right I made a little bit of a start on the handrail and I'm using this little guy here to gauge the height of the handrail which works out 
roughly about 13 millimeters and um, similar to what I did with the windows I'm making these handrails up in kit form um, like I did with this end piece there if I just turn that around you can see what I mean so it's it's 13 millimeters high and uh, just making this piece here which goes along this front edge there and uh, I've got to get that set at 10 mil centers so I'm just uh, making sure that that fits in there really tiny pieces I'm using 1.5 um, strip and then 0 0.5 by 1 mil thin strip to use as the the runners for the handrail so I'm just uh, in the process of making this one I'm just setting this up at 10 mil so I'm using the squares but it's roughly 20 mil across this width there so using it's very fiddly these little bits but once the glue gets a hold it should be okay Right, so now we move on to the fireplace. Um, I've dropped some little bits of um, fine scale coal behind the grill there. There's a little grill, I don't know if you can make it out, but the coal has gone behind it. The coal I'm using is fine scale coal, it's quite fine, and to pick it up, I've cut an angle on a straw, like that, on a 4 mil straw. And then just scooped it up and then place it there at the back of that grill. And then I've dropped a couple of drops of super glue in there. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add some paint to this, some matte 46. And then I'm going to top it up again with coal again. So it looks like um, there's a little glow in there, but without, the, without an LED. So let's just see what it looks like when it's done. Right, so I've dipped my toothpick into this matte paint and it's just going to pick up a little bit, I'm hoping, not too much. I'm just going to drop it in there. Right, so I've dropped that orange paint in there and then I'll go back over again with the coal and then top it up and then drop some more super glue on top. So it's kind of worked. Um, the idea was there and it looks like there's a little bit of a glow there and you can see some flames in the background there. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I can now glue that into the signal box. Moving on a little bit, uh, as you can see I've um, painted the handrails the um, same colour as the uh, doors and I've added the doorknob to the, um, the door at the top there I don't know if you can see that but I'll just point it out to you just there and that's using one of those fine scale um, track pins. So what I'm in the process of doing now is I'm going to start weathering up the stones using the colour matte 67. It's similar to the colour that I used on the water tower and I've also, if you look closely in there, you can see that I've done something similar with the stones around the fireplace. As you can see there, I've sort of weathered them and I've painted the inside as well. So that's all done. The windows are being painted as well. So there's only one thing left to do and that's to change the colour of these stones using this matte 67. I'm putting plenty on and then I'm going to rub it off with a Q-tip and just hope that these corners 
have to blend in. Same as before, I will be using some green around the edges um, to highlight the, um, some mold and that sort of thing. So I'm putting plenty on, and uh, I'm just I'm not going too mad and rubbing it off. I just want the stones to come through like so. And uh, yeah, it's giving that nice aged effect. Yes, simple but very effective. And as for the joints on the corner, I think barely notice them. It kind of blends it all in with the paint. Right, so I might have to go over with a different grey, a lighter grey, but we shall see. But so far, that is looking pretty good. Right, so I finished with the uh, matte 67. Now I'm just going to go over with a little bit of um, satin grey, 126. Um, I'm hardly touching it, but I'm just taking some of that black off, that's all. Try and lighten it up. And uh, just using a cotton bud to blend the paint in. Just to take the black sheen off of it, really. Because I've, uh, I've put this building next door to the water tower and it's just a fraction too dark. So I'm just lightening it up a little bit. And finally, just a little bit of green in a few places, just mainly on the edges. And the green I'm using is Matte 149. You barely can see the green, but it's just... If I put too much on, I'll just wipe it off again. Maybe a little bit of green around the back there. But uh, you can hardly notice it. And what I do like about the way this building has turned out is the corners. You can hardly see a line down those corners, so they really have blended in well. And uh, that was one of the things I was, wasn't sure about and whether it would uh, work or not. Just a little bit of green here and there. Just to finish it off. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to blend in with the the other building, the water tower that's over there, but uh, yeah. What we're looking at now is the base that the signal box is going to um, actually sit on. Um, obviously using this uh, cobblestone sheet is going to raise the signal box just a couple of millimeters on the baseboard so, so I put the signal box in place um, where I've marked it with my pencil lines like so so that's where it's going to sit 
So what I want to do is cut away this section here and put re-glue this edging back on that you get with the cobblestones. So you've got a nice neat edge around there um, so that it blends in with the existing cobblestones that are already on the layout. So that's the plan. And if we put the signal box back, you can see what I mean now. So that just gives it the extra depth for any point rotting that I may decide to add in the future. And then we'll just put these edging stones back on. And this is what I was hoping to achieve with the base. Um, if we lift off the signal box, we'll see four tabs, which locates inside the signal box, so that when I place it on here, it don't move. It's quite firm. It's, it's, it's quite rigid. Um, so the only thing that's left to do with this base is to drill a hole in here, roughly about six or seven mil, and then this will get glued onto the baseboard, and then um, that's the fixing point for the baseboard done. Um, and then we just put that on there when it's all done, when it's got the roof on and the LEDs fitted. Um, it's weathered in the same way, um, mostly green and black. Um, obviously it'll be a little bit um, dirtier on the on the ground than what it would be on the walls. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way that that's looking so far. Right, so now that the paint has dried and um, the detail in the stonework, it's, it's hard to see and with the, the camera, it's not doing it's justice, but the, the stonework looks all different. Colours, different uh, types, types of greys. and But yeah, I'm quite uh, happy with the way that that has turned out. Right, so now that that's done, I have painted some handrails using some 0.8 wire, just bent at right angles to match the the widths of the windows where the holes are. So I can glue these on now, trim them down and then glue them on. So the handrails should just uh, pop in really. Um, that's if I got the measurements right. So that one goes in there and then that one that end goes in there. kind of goes in I need to trim a bit more off of that and yeah, I've got to trim a little bit more off of that There we go. So that's the two handrails fitted. So what I've got to do now is just put a little drop of super glue just around it, um, just to hold it in place. And then that's it, that's the handrails done. I've already popped the super glue in, and as you can see, it, it's ghosted up, but I can just touch it up with a bit of paint. Hence why I haven't put the glazing in just yet, because I knew that this uh, job was. It's going to come, but there you go. Right, so that's the handrails completed. I've just finished touching them up with some black satin paint to hide the um, flashing from the super glue. And um, I think it's time to have a look to see what it looks like on the layout. Um, yeah. Let's have a look, shall we? 
Right, so here we are, we're at Jarrah Road and the um, signal box is in place. Um, yeah, it seems to um, complement the water tower, which is next door. Um, they look quite similar and that is what I was hoping for all along um, when I decided on how this signal box should look. Um, yeah, with the handrails now on and the stairs leading up to the um, entrance into the signal box, the fireplace, uh, yep, yeah, it's slowly coming together at last. Um, there's still a long way to go yet. Um, we've got the running boards to put on here and then down that side. And we've also got to put in the... Um, interior as well, um, the levers and everything else that is so associated with a signal box. And then we have the main roof assembly to do yet as well. So we're getting there. And um, it's not a bad effort for this week to be honest. Let me know in the comments what you think. Right, I think that's all from me now. Until next time, stay safe everybody, and uh, we'll see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye.